the uniaxial compressive strength for a rock is the maximum stress that can be applied uniaxially to an unconfined test specimen. And that's going to be in a units of force per area, which of course we would say MPA, KSI, whatever you want, whatever system, whatever scale you need to use. So if we have a, pretend this is a nice core sample here and doesn't have this big bulge out here. If we have a specimen of rock, right, then we think of uniaxially compressive, right? We're applying a stress along its axis and it is unconfined. There's no confining pressure like, like there would be in nature along the diameter here in the radial direction. We're just putting it in a press and compressing it downwards, right? And of course, you'd have stress on both sides and you'd see when it breaks. That's gonna give you the maximum stress it can hold and that's gonna be your uniaxial compressive strength or sometimes we'll write it UCS for short. So this is a thing where it can be used in a lot of different applications because it's a measure of how strong the rock is, right? Even though in nature, rocks aren't gonna be in a situation where they're gonna be compressed in just one direction and they're not gonna be in these nice little uh, cylinders either, right? But it's still useful regardless because it is a measure of the rock's strength. And so we use this in a couple of instances. And the first one that we're gonna talk about today is the Moore Coulomb failure criterion. And this is an easy one to use because it gives us all the information, well, an estimation of the failure, and it's a completely linear equation. So I'll write it out here. Sigma 1 is equal to UCS plus beta sigma 3. And so we can break down the pieces of this. Sigma 1 is going to be the maximum stress that can be applied in the axial direction, right? If we take an example of another cylinder, right? Then this would be sigma one, and then sigma three would be the confining stress, which would be much smaller than sigma one. The UCS is the uniaxial compressive str strength. Beta is what's going to be called the strengthening factor. And that's something that we can determine for different rock types. It's not, it's, it's, it's completely empirical. It's not nothing inherent to the rock itself, but it's something we can determine based on this criteria. And finally, sigma three, of course, is going to be the confining stress. And as I said, this is the more Coulomb failure criterion. There are other ones as well, but this one is the simplest because it's completely linear. And for most cases in rock mechanics and even other fields of study like snow mechanics, this stuff can be decently useful. So breaking it down, it should match what your intuition would say, right? If beta is a positive number and we say that sigma 3 is 0, then of course the maximum stress that you can apply in the axial direction is just going to be the uniaxial compressive stress. But then as you increase the confinement, then you're pushing a lot of times what we think of it as is, imagine as you increase the confinement in this radial direction, at a very small scale, the fractures within this brittle material are kind of being closed and you're putting a lot more energy into these with, with these stress fields at a molecular or a, it's technically not molecular, is it? Because they're, they're in a lattice <laughs> at a very small scale, right? You get the idea. You're putting a lot of energy into this thing and that's going to help it hold up better, especially because of those fractures that get closed. Because the big thing that causes rocks to fail, as with any brittle material, is fractures. And that's why they deal so poorly in tension because you're splitting those fractures apart rather than pushing them together. So I should mention that this is, this is, of course, applicable to compression, not tension. Rocks failing in tension is going to be a lot different. We use something called the, you know, well, we can use different things, but one of the most popular is the Brazilian tensile strength, which is going to be very different than the compressive strength of the rock. Um, and then you'll you'll think, okay, well, if we crank sigma 3 up enough, and depending on what the strengthening factor is, 
then it might get so strong that, you know, we wouldn't expect it to fail at all. And that's what will happen in a lot of cases in the Earth. Obviously, rock isn't breaking down unless people are disturbing it, right? So because there's a lot of horizontal stresses, even with incredible vertical stresses, uh, usually rock mass holds up. Otherwise, the crust wouldn't be a thing. So, of course, finally, I'll say we can plot this as sigma 1 versus sigma 3. If we do our axes here, this is sigma 3, let's say in KSI. I used MPA in the last video. I think gotta got to keep it varied up. Got to going to throw in some imperial units every now and again. And then the y-intercept on this is going to be when sigma 3 is 0, so that's going to be the UCS, whatever that is for your particular rock. And then you might just do this in the lab, right? You could have a triaxial test that's run. Obviously, for this, you would test it as a uniaxial compressive, but let's say you have a, a, a compression cell that has the correct, the correct apparatus, I forget what it's like, where you can compress it in the radial direction as well, and you start measuring for different values of theta, theta, for sigma 3. So you could go in here and test it at different intervals. So sigma 3, 1, sigma 3, 2, sigma 3, 3. And then you would look at how this changes over time. And you'd be looking at different numbers, and then the end result of that is going to be a line, or close to a line. And then the slope of that line is going to be beta, the strengthening factor. And then once you've determined that beta for that specific rock, you can go and interpolate or extrapolate whatever stress conditions you'd expect for any rock at a given site. And of course, in real life, this isn't going to be a perfectly straight line. You know, if you're doing laboratory tests, that's the thing. This more Coulomb criteria is an approximation, just like all of the different methods we have of figuring out when a rock is going to fail, when it exceeds its maximum stress. Um, and the linear approximation may be more crude, especially within once it exceeds certain ranges. Um, but you'll find that for a good number of rocks, good well-behaved rocks like this Indiana limestone here, they behave pretty well. And you might expect it to be decently linear. And then it would be up to your scientific judgment to say, well, you know, we can fit a, we can do a best fit line through these points. Even if, you know, you put a, you do a whole bunch of them and on a whole bunch of different samples. And, you know, you'll expect some scattering, one, because it's not perfectly linear, two, because different rock samples are just going to be different. If some of them have, you know, more microscopic inconsistencies and breaks, then that'll factor in here and probably weaken it. If some of them have infillings, different amounts of infillings of different clay minerals in here, say, then that's going to affect it as well, and it might fail in shear sooner. Just a whole bunch of things at play. But for the most part, this is a pretty simple and cool way of determining, importantly, when will the rock fail. And for geotechnical stuff, that's really what we want to know.